Welcome to the Real Life Overtime Podcast, the place where the members of the Real Life Ministry Sermon Team go deeper into the weekend sermon. Watch them as they unpack, unfold, and unravel the weekend sermon like never before. So fasten your seatbelts, hit play, and join us for Real Life Overtime, where every episode is an adventure and this sermon doesn't end on Sunday. Welcome back to the Real Life Ministries Overtime Podcast. I'm Blake Whiteman. I'm the campus pastor at our Real Life Ministries Coeur d'Alene campus. And we get to come back again with a team of preachers from our campuses uh, to talk about the last week of our series in Paradox. We're talking about persecution today. With me, we have Mr. Bill Krause, who was speaking at our Post Falls campus. Good to have you, Bill. Good to be here. Uh, next to him, we have Josh Austin. Mm -hmm. And Josh, you were speaking at our Hayden campus this week. That's right. right First on. one, persecution. Nice. <laughs> Welcome. Awesome. <laughs> Good to have you, man. And uh, Jim Blazon, again, our North Campus pastor, was speaking up there at the North Campus this week. So good to have you, Jim. Yeah. Good to be here. Awesome. Well, as uh, mentioned, we are in the last uh, week of our series called Paradox, and we've been walking through these ideas from the Sermon on the Mount and in the Beatitudes. And this week, we talked about how blessed are those who are persecuted. Mm -hmm. And so, Bill, why don't you just give us an update and share what you were that went this week? Well, we, you know, it's the end of the Beatitudes, and one of the things I appreciate, it's one of the reasons I do trust Jesus with my life and my loyalty, is uh, he is not Madison Avenue. He doesn't just highlight the good things and not tell us that there is potential downsides. And I appreciate, even though it's a hard teaching and a paradox, I like this. Like Josh was saying, this this is the most paradoxical statement in the Beatitudes. So you do all these good things to be a member of the kingdom, and what do you get? Mm. Persecution. Mm. And it's the one part of the Beatitudes that he goes on and explains. He takes another couple of verses to mm. explain and. Mm. Just I, I just appreciate that. How do we be prepared for that? So yeah, that was kind of good. our overall. Yeah, it's good. Josh? Yeah, I, mean, I just, I started with just acknowledging to everyone I'm, I'm, I'm an inadequate vessel for this sermon. I don't know if I've experienced that much per persecution mm. for the name of Jesus. And that was really convicting it and it wrecked me. And so I started from a place of, I want all of you to be wrecked just like I've been wrecked this whole week, right? <laughs> good invitation. And, and so, yeah, I figured that's a good jumping off point. But my aim on Sunday was to to challenge our thinking of, of what persecution is. Hmm. And for, for the Christian, it's persecution, here's my aim, isn't something to avoid or if it's happening, hey, I must be doing something wrong. For the Christian, I wanted them to start seeing persecution as a badge of honor hmm. for us to earn because in earning persecution, we are aligned and more dependent and experience more intimacy with our Savior. And so that's kind of the, uh, the, the route I took. The question that I wanted everyone to wrestle with is, are you living a life worthy hmm. of persecution? Because that was the question that wrecked me all week as I was preparing this sermon. Well, I, I like that too, that you said that, because when, when it, the, the phrase sharing in the sufferings of Christ mm -hmm. is used, it doesn't mean we're on the cross atoning for our sin. Hmm. It's talking about persecution. The sufferings of Christ yeah. have continued since the cross. That's mm -hmm. really good, Josh. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, it's a good topic for you to enter in on, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. You said earlier it was welcome to Persecution Weekend or Persecution Sunday it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, you want to experience persecution, work for Gabe Cleave, you know? <laughs> That's uh... <laughs> Anyways. Go Love on. you, Gabe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Gabe. <laughs> JB, what do you got? Well, I, I think uh, it was, it's a challenging week, obviously, yeah. and it's not a sugarcoat week. It's just lay it out there. Mm -hmm. Scripture speaks clearly, but we talked a lot about uh, what persecution is and what it's not. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was very succinct, or Matthew writing in uh, 10 and 11, verses 10 and 11, mm -hmm. talking about that persecution is for righteousness sake and because of Christ. And so we unpacked righteousness and what does that look like? And and because of Christ. And we looked at Jesus and the fact that he was persecuted just because he was righteous. And we reflected on the fact that, you know, sometimes you you know a Christian by just barely hearing any words out of their mouth because they have the light of Christ in them. And mm -hmm. you, you kind of look at them and go, I know you're a Christian, you know, yeah. before you even get a lot out of them. And, and Jesus just, he showed up and you know, it's like Isaiah six. It's just like, woe is me, you know? So uh, yeah, I'm undone. Yeah. yeah. And so we, then we talked about the fact that Jesus did righteous acts that he, he did righteousness and he, he really reached out to the marginalized mm -hmm. and, 
And so uh, he was, there was a lot of blowback in his life because of who he ministered to, and he went against the status quo. And we reflected on what does that look like in our lives? And then, you know, ultimately, um, he talked about righteousness, like that he is the righteous one, and he made audacious claims. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we looked at, if Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me, uh, I'm the bread of life. If he makes these audacious claims, then what happens to us when we step out and we make claims about Jesus? I mean, are we going to be uh, persecuted any less? And so uh, mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. It, That's good, Jim, yeah. too. That One of the things that it took us to or that I was really enamored with was, you know, what is actually behind persecution? And um, it, it comes down, it's pretty obvious from the text, though, uh, the forces of darkness uh, hate Jesus. Yep. In John 3, he says the forces of darkness won't even come to the light because their deeds are evil and they don't want them exposed. Right. But then Jesus in John 15, he even says, they hated me without reason. The forces of darkness are actually irrational. Yeah. So trying to always make persecution make sense, mm. at, at its good. baseline, Jesus was the righteous teacher and the forces of darkness hate him because the enemy hates him. Right. And, and that that's what prompts and compels people to be that way. But mm -hmm. the, the one that got me was the pivot on that is, because later on in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus's response to that irrational hate, I think is equally irrational. Yeah. <laughs> because he says, love your enemies, yeah. mm -hmm. pray for those mm -hmm. who persecute. I'm like, what are you talking about? I, we need a lawsuit yeah. here. We need to call the cops. What's <laughs> going on? No, no. You know, for, for, for insults, turn the other cheek. Yeah. If they're hunting you down, don't be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're slandering you, now they're away from you and they're saying things about you. That's going to happen. Because it's so whole, hard to come in the opposite spirit yeah, in our yeah. flesh. Yeah. You know, when we look at the Beatitudes, it, it, this is not like, it's not a list to do. It's a transformational, uh, the Lord is changing us and we're becoming more Kingdom like DNA. these, like these characteristics. Yeah. They're yeah. a composite yeah. of who, what does it look like to actually be an authentic Christian? Yeah. And we talked a lot about being authentic versus yeah. wearing a badge and then, doing something entirely different yeah. and then mm -hmm. expecting people to respond differently. There's a resistance to our transformation. Even. Yeah. yeah. That's mm -hmm. wild. That's good. That's good. Um, similar message, you know, from our campus, uh, we talked about um, kind of the sequence of what Jesus is saying in order there again, 10 through 12 to where, uh, you know, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Yeah. Um, again, for they will, the kingdom will be theirs. And then Jesus again says that, the way in which persecution is going to happen is from people, yeah. right? And people are going to say insults and they're going to lie and they're going to bring false testimony. And as the text says, you know, all sorts of different resistances. Yeah. Um, and then even in the last piece, Jim, like you and I were talking, he says that they're going to be persecuted like the prophets were before you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in a generalization, prophets are those that are going to speak the truth of God into a situation. And so yeah. words and actions mm -hmm. and persecution is going to come from people. Um, I thought a fun thing that I shared from our campus was, uh, if you really kind of start to pick some words apart for the Greek word of persecution, um, or to be persecuted, uh, is connected to a few root roots, two together, the word delios and then the word diakonos, believe it or not. And so the diakonos word is used often in kind of church circles for mm -hmm. this idea of what a deacon is mm -hmm. and de servant. defined as a servant, a mm -hmm. minister, um, one that is actually making an effort uh, underneath a master. Mm -hmm. And so when we use the term diakonos or minister or servant, we would say that it's an action that is uh, underneath our master or our Lord, who is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, it's half of that definition for persecution is that, but the other half comes from the word dalios, which actually means fear or to operate out of a faithless position or to be timid. So if you put those two words together, which gets you to this idea of persecution, you could say that it's a person that is acting out of the submission to fear is why they persecute other people. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus says, for righteousness sake, for my name's sake, for the gospel's sake, when you mm -hmm. bring that to people, their reaction from a broken relationship or operating out of fear or not having a peaceable restored relationship with God from last week causes them to chase off, to cause, to flight, to leave. Mm -hmm. And so we tried to have the conversation on the front end to understand 
the right expectation, Bill, mm-hmm. like you said, mm-hmm. we should expect persecution. If we're living out the gospel, there's going to be resistance as Jesus had resistance. Mm-hmm. But am I looking beyond that to really find out why is somebody coming after me? Mm-hmm. In as much as it's a human reason, mm-hmm. that can be because of their fear and their brokenness and they're trying to be protective or whatever that may be. Mm-hmm. That gives me a little bit more perseverance and persecution. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I talked about how I was that person. Right. Like when people were pursuing me, when I was not in a great spot, Mm -hmm. like I was that persecutor and attacker and I didn't want to hear truth and I didn't I couldn't eat. Right. The Mm -hmm. grace that people were trying to give me. I just wanted to shoot the messenger, so to say. And it helped me really think through and go, okay, to be perseverant or to be a person that receives persecution. Can I see the brokenness of people that are doing the persecuting in this Mm -hmm. direction? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, one piece we attached to it to a gentleman that came up to me after first service and was like, that was really good, but here's something I'd add to it. And he was totally right. <laughs> and he was like, you know, we don't, we don't fight against flesh and blood, yeah. right? The battle yeah. is actually against the spiritual, mm-hmm. you know? And I was like, okay, you're, that's really good. Um, it's not always people's control or their decisions sure. or it's not always logical, but you know, it is a spiritual battle with what Jesus has created and put into place and the light and dark battle. So but that, yeah. that is the challenge then when he's saying praying for those who persecute you is seeing people as captives right. of yep. right. the evil one, yep. not yeah. the evil one, which is hard. You know, it's hard to, when yeah. people are acting like, you know, the father of darkness, mm-hmm. it's easy to kind of paint them that, but they're, they're captives. They're sure they've been lied to and yep. maybe volitionally they've embraced it, but still the evil's coming from a source. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know. So I'd be interested. Um, we talked about what persecution is. Uh, any thoughts or sharing on on what persecution's not? To try to give you know some thoughts on is everything persecution all the time? Yeah. Are there differences of that? Or, or is there persecution that is not for Christ's sake? Did you guys talk about that at all? Yeah, I did. I mean, I think you have to go there uh, so, because Jesus. It's pretty narrow definition mm-hmm. uh, of what what persecution is that leads to kingdom citizenship. Right. And it's persecution for him, for righteousness Mm -hmm. sake, for Jesus's name. And so it's not any and all suffering. And so we talked about that. It's just because you're suffering or going through hardship. That's not necessarily persecution. Sometimes you're suffering because of your own decisions (laughs) or the people you've surrounded yourself with. Right. And that's not persecution. And we told the blimp story of the guy that dropped gospel tracks all over his neighborhood and the HOA came after him and he thinks to himself, I'm persecuted. It's like, no, you're an idiot. Like, <laughs> but people that's not the way to do the that. Yeah, because like, you, you littered yeah, all over yeah, the neighborhood. Yeah, and, yeah. bonfires, gospel <laughs> yeah, that, bonfire. <laughs> yeah, that's not persecution. And we also kind of, I even talked a little bit about COVID because that was a, that was a unique time hmm. in our history. And many Christians felt, hey, the, the church is being persecuted. And so I, I helped them draw a line, at least is my attempt. When we're suffering right alongside the world and they're suffering for, through the very same thing, that's not the persecution suffering Jesus is talking about. He's talking about suffering for his namesake, for his righteousness. Right. Mm. And, and to understand what that looks like, you need to read a little bit further in the Sermon on the Mount where he talks about you are to be the, the salt right. of it's the good. world, the, the mm-hmm. light, the city on a hill. City, so and on and hill. so mm-hmm. so are you in the world experiencing suffering right alongside the world or in Jesus's name? Have you distinguished yourself out here and now we're light where persecution will find you? You mm. don't need to go looking for right. it. Right. Because you're different, because you're living now a life devoted to his righteousness for his purposes under his lordship. And that's completely different. Totally different. It's really mm-hmm. good, Josh. That's good. Yeah. JB, anything in that category? Yeah. I, you know, I, I think um, there are many things that we bring upon ourselves. Yeah. It just We've all done it. Right. And mm-hmm. so even I think, you know, I, th- I think about for righteousness sake and righteousness, the I think it comes down to the motivation. Like you can do things, but if your heart is off and your motivation's off, you, I think you miss the mark. Mm-hmm. I, I really do. And so um, for me, you know, we talked about silly things like, you know, if you, if, if you're a bull in a China shop and I'm just, I'm just bringing the truth. Right. And you hammer people. Why are you looking at me? Yeah, I was like, so I was like you're talking about someone right now. <laughs> You are a bull in a china <laughs> shop, but no, I'm just kidding. But you know, when we when we approach people, there there's a heart and a spirit behind it mm-hmm. that has everything to do with it. I mean, we we can come in the right heart and the right spirit and truly receive biblical persecution, yeah. but we can bring on sure. a different kind of persecution 
I mean, you can argue politics with someone mm -hmm. and, and get a lot of blowback from it. Is that truly the biblical persecution that Jesus is talking about no. in the Beatitudes? Mm -hmm. I don't think it is. Well, that's, and the clarifier for me on that uh, same question, uh, I mean, even personally, but at the intro of the sermon was, uh, if you want to get, uh, if you want to filter about, is this persecution or not persecution, build a relationship with some people who truly have gone through mm. persecution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, a lot of times that means you have to go overseas because you can't always trust what's online. Although we've got a boatload of missionaries coming here this week mm -hmm. uh, for Missions Week, and some of them have experience. You know, and w once you kind of hear their stories, you're like, eh, yeah, okay, now I've got I, some clarity. That's persecution. Yeah, and I, and I would say it, how it's manifest may, there's variance to persecution. Mm -hmm. There's not a wide... Uh, definition of biblical persecution, yeah. but there's how it's expressed or lived out or manifests. There's a why. I mean, from exclusion to ridicule. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you just march your way right up the mm -hmm. ladder to mm -hmm. full martyrdom. Mm -hmm. You know, in the West, that's just not something that at this given point that we mm -hmm. face the way that some of the Middle Eastern. Did you dive into people, that a little bit? Your, uh, a show? little bit. Yeah, I did. I, I talked about the difference. I, I really tried to be practical. I, I address students like big time because they're yeah. getting ready to go back to school. And, and, you know, we, we can help them be resilient. We can, we can set them up. Well, um, I talked about the fact that if, as a parent, if you take every obstacle out of the way, you know, your kids will fold like a house of cards when, mm -hmm. when the heat comes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Jesus ministered and was persecuted heavily because he ministered to the marginalized. Mm -hmm. And so I brought it down to, you know, do you feel compelled to minister and to befriend someone who may be an outcast and not the popular one? I talked about power brokers, that the, the Pharisees were the power brokers. Yeah. And I, I brought it down to the level of, you know, relationships in school and, and who are the power brokers in school? And mm -hmm. will you roll under them because of the fear of man or will you stand up for... Who God's called you to be. Mm -hmm. And so I think that speaks to all of us. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not just kids in school. It's mm -hmm. in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, I try to have a little fun with it in this section. Josh, like you were saying, like, welcome to persecution weekend. And yeah. you know, it is the paradox, I think, a heavy one of the of the statements in the Beatitudes. But um, I had kind of walked through a couple examples of what persecution is not, kind of hinging on using the word bad repeatedly, uh, just because later in Peter, he says, you know, to, to suffer different, but similar concept for doing good is worth it. Right. Especially mm -hmm. if God says it is. And so I had brought some brevity to the conversation or and some levity and said, you know, it's not, it's not persecution when the weather's bad, you know, or you have bad food or you have, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. a bad experience, or you even have like a bad attitude. Mm. Like you can have a bad attitude, like what you're saying, Jim, and go around and pick fights and cause problems and, and then go, this is because of Jesus, where in actuality, it's the consequences of your own decisions. Mm. And I think if you continue to further that out, looking at at least to give examples of, am I persecuted for Christ's sake or am I persecuted just based on the reality of what God has set up in his creation? And so I think a bad attitude or a, a bad disposition can elicit negative feedback or criticism that has nothing to do with the gospel's sake or Jesus' sake, but just us being people. Um, one of the things I shared, I, I would love your thoughts on this just now that we're in the moment, is that I had said that Jesus and, and God in creation had set up an environment in creation that allows freedom and gives people the ability to make choice and an invitation to be loved and reciprocate with God's relationship. And sometimes in creation, God allows things to happen. And so I had said, you know, God with intentionality made great white sharks and grizzly bears and gravity and bungee jumping and all this <laughs> other stuff and jet skis. And, you know, if you decide to get on a jet ski and, you know, hammer at 50 miles an hour and fly off of your, yeah. you know, jet ski and hammer the, the water, that doesn't mean that you're persecuted. That just means that there's freedom within creation for things to happen. And I tried to set the stage to go, there can be trial and tribulation and difficulty that a person goes through that is not direct persecution for being a Christian to try to allow people to not make, I would say, excuses for what they may or may not be doing for the Lord. So I don't know if that's true or not, Bill, but what do you think about that? Uh, I think that's nice. <laughs> uh, no, I, I agree with you. I mean, we, we live in a 
we live in a universe where God has allowed us to make choices. Um, I, I tried to end on more of a note, though, and I think this is all relevant. I tried to end more on a note, though, of uh, a translator that I had in Russia came over to visit us here and uh, still was not free. We, we were at Applebee's up mm. in uh, South Hill, and she was afraid the KGB was still watching us. Mm -hmm. And it really dawned on me, though, uh, it's not against the law yet for me to invite my neighbor to church. You know, we don't have anybody kicking down our life group doors right. and mm -hmm. carting the leader off to mm -hmm. prison. Mm -hmm. I stood on a podium, you know, and preached clearly. Uh, well, I thought it was clearly. That's pretty clear. Uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, yeah. you know, and trying to help people go, yeah, there's difficulties at school or work or mm -hmm. because of our choices or tribulations, but don't lose the fact that right now people gave their lives to pay mm -hmm. that we have the freedom. Right. Uh, to speak out. Now, that that may change. It may not. I don't know. I'm still hoping for revival. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't want to get persecuphobic, you know, to where uh, I'm so high centered on that that I'm not moving forward with the gospel, mm -hmm. yeah. having the hope. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> That's good. I don't know. Yeah. What are you thinking, Josh? Well, I'm thinking a lot of things, but <laughs> you triggered a new thought. You triggered a new thought. So now, what's the thought I want to talk about? <laughs> Part <laughs> part of it is we have things in this world will happen, right? Suffering takes place. Life is just hard, mm. you know, and, and it's not all persecution. If persecution is everything, then it's really nothing, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so it, for me, it's really important to stick to this is how Jesus defines it. And, and that's really important for us. And part of the reason why that's important for us, I was, I was turning to uh, 2 Corinthians 1, because he, Paul writes in here that Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all affliction, so that we may, may, may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction, the comfort with which we ourselves have been comforted. And this is why, this, so that's important, that we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings. So through Christ, we share abundantly in his comfort too. Mm -hmm. It's important that we understand persecution is for righteousness sake for Jesus. And then when we go through that persecution, we share in the sufferings of Christ, which makes me as a, as, as a Christ follower able to offer you another brother in Christ, the comfort, comfort. that I receive. Yeah. But it, it seems to be only in this. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In the absence of persecution and suffering, can you offer that comfort that Jesus offers. Yeah. Mm. If you don't need, if you don't need it, do you not need it or can you not receive it? Right. Mm. So That's there's something true. about persecution that forces us to ask the question. It's really a testing of our own faith. This is why persecution is important. It's that badge of honor mm. that we should all strive to live a life worthy of mm. because how good is your faith? Well, I, I, I mean, I, I think it, it actually demonstrates whether we're saved or not. I, let me, let me back up for a minute. That's Explain a, that, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, if 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 uh, if I'm living a life that isn't worthy for persecution, then mm. am I lukewarm? Like, what what's my witness? Yeah. But but I think um, persecution demonstrates if I'm being persecuted and it's biblical persecution, that is just reinforcement that I'm that I'm saved and that I have a a reward in heaven. The promise. Yeah looking forward. So it's both. It reminds me that I actually am saved because we live in a world where you can, you can switch hats every day of the week and be a different person. Yeah. But if, if you are actually, if you're living devoted to Christ, if you're serving with humility, if, if you are meek in nature, I mean, if you, I mean, you got to go back to five, three, you got to go back to the very beginning. If you're not poor in spirit, the rest of this stuff is, is a house of cards. It doesn't mm -hmm. stack up. Mm -hmm. If you don't recognize your dependency on Christ and as a result, mourn what your sin has done to others and what other sin does to you and the world, and the result of that leave you in this place of meekness and humility, then you're not positioned to give an answer for the hope that you have in Christ Jesus. Mm, yeah. You're just, and that, and that's how I landed was to use first Peter three fifteen and to mm, say, you know, like you said a minute ago, Josh, it, it, are you worthy of persecution? And then the second thing I landed with was, will people actually come up? Are, are you safe enough? Are you meek enough? Are you humble enough? Are you transparent enough that they'll come up and say, hey, why are you different? Yeah, Tell me why like you have opened this world. Yeah, like, we're all about giving the defense. 
but we shoot them down before they even have a chance to approach us. Yeah. yeah. Right. So mm. it's yeah. good. How did you guys wrap it up? It depended on the service. <laughs> <laughs> Do the best one. How about that? Uh, my attempt to wrap up was really to focus in on how persecution aligns us with Jesus. Yeah. It aligns us with the sufferings of Christ. He, he said, if you desire to come after me, you need to deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. This is what it's going to look like. And there they knew when he said that, okay, so it means we're going to suffer if we want to follow you and be like you. We're going to suffer. Suffering will be part of the, our reality for that. Um, and I ended with Acts 1.8, um, yeah. where we talks about, you will be my witnesses mm -hmm. in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And we, we really camped out on that word witnesses, mm. which is where we get our word martyr, mm -hmm. right? You will be my martyrs throughout the whole world. And so how are we doing living a life worthy of martyrdom for mm. Jesus? Which is a really hard question. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is why it wrecked me, because I'm like, am I doing that well? You mentioned if you're not poor in spirit, it's all a house of cards, mm -hmm. right? So these are all stepping stones throughout the Beatitudes. And if we and if these are characteristics are true of our lives, opposition and persecution is the natural outcome. And so if I'm not experiencing right. that, am I displaying these characteristics in my life? And that's mm -hmm. and that's why I wanted to wreck everyone with that. Like, how are mm -hmm. we doing with that? Are you a good peacemaker today? Because you'll experience <laughs> opposition if you are. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, huh. Oh, huh. Yeah. Oh, huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, how'd you kind of wrap that? Well, in, in I, back, back to what I had said previously, too, that we still have a lot of freedom. We shouldn't lose sight of that. You yeah. know, when you when yeah. you buckle up against somebody who's really been through life threatening persecution, it mm -hmm. gives you perspective. But back to what both of you said, uh, it was the hope of Christianity that changed. You know, they were sending them to the Colosseum. Yeah. Mm hmm. And I can imagine, I kind of imagined in my own mind, I'm sitting up in the Coliseum. What's the show today? We're going to have some more Christians Oof. killed. And there's my mm. neighbor. And he's the guy who brought meals over to my house when my wife was sick. Mm. And that group that nobody's supposed to know about has been praying for me. And he's being killed by lions. It was the hope wow. that changed culture. And I think I, I want to be careful about that. It's always the gospel for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's the hope of the gospel mm -hmm. that changes culture mm -hmm. more than being right yep. or being a martyr or, you know, lawyering up or whatever, you mm -hmm. know. And, and to live a hope-filled life mm -hmm. is... An anecdote, whether you're in persecution or not, uh, to affect yeah. the culture around you. Well, and the reality is that's Romans 5, right? Well, yeah, of course. Of course it is. I you're, was thinking 2 Peter 4, but, you you're, know. You're basically reciting <laughs> Romans 5 to me right yeah, now. Yeah, well, I am. Essentially, there is no hope without suffering. Suffering actually, in right. the end, produces hope mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it produces right. steadfastness, mm -hmm. right. which produces yeah. character, which produces mm -hmm. hope. So without suffering and persecution, like where there is no hope. There is no hope. Mm hmm which is paradoxical. Josh, yes. you're our only hope. Yes, no, it is. No, I'm not. <laughs> that sounds like a Star Wars movie. Yeah, it is a Star Wars uh, movie. Similar. I, uh, you know, Blazing used the same Peter verse where, you know, it's like, how, how do we respond in persecution? You know, and he starts out in, I think it's somewhere around verse eight, in chapter three, I think, um, where he starts to say, be humble, be yeah. patient, mm -hmm. right? Be considerate of yeah. one another. Do not repay evil with For, evil. Yeah but instead repay evil with a blessing for a blessing mm -hmm. is what you've been called to. Mm -hmm. So just in those moments of trying to work through persecution, even if it's in relationship with people, I like to make excuses and justify all the time. Absolutely. I tried, they pushed back. <laughs> so I pushed back. You're the only one that does <laughs> and that. That's no one else fair does that. And just right. And I tried and they're persecuting. <laughs> I persecute them back. Right. And so just again, that challenge, exactly what you're saying, Josh, which is, I think the directive of the Beatitudes, the condition of the heart is to go, man, how difficult is that to remain self-control in persecution, to stay perseverant? And then he gets down to where you had already mentioned and be ready to give right the answer for the hope that you have. Mm -hmm. And so we spend a little time talking about, is it worth it to go through persecution so that you have the chance to share the hope that you have in Christ? And I just flat out shared the gospel with our team again and just said, Jesus was willing to go through everything he went through because mm -hmm. he thinks you're worth it. Are we willing to be people in relationship? Blake, Blake that is just money, though, what you're saying, because mm -hmm. that is the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. It takes it back. Because he's saying, I'm going to surrender to this because you're in charge yeah. and the ultimate plan yep. mm, is hope filled. And I'm sweating blood and, and, and Father, I trust you. And maybe my, my people around me are not. That's but you so know good. what? 
the the joy set before the hope mm. that he has that we have am i willing to per to persevere in persecution yeah. and again i shared kind of like you josh i was like i gotta be honest with you like i was that persecuting person like i already shared and i'm so glad that there was people in my life that were like i think you're worth it because jesus mm -hmm. said i was worth it and it just kind of tips into what i think the rest of the sermon on a mount goes where it's like That's okay cool. Like, this is what it means, salt and light and a city on a hill and love your enemies and all those other things. And, you know, when I'm encouraged by Jesus thinks that, that we're worth it and he loves his creation and his people and like-mindedness and community, then I think that's what the church is, right? Is that we can spur each other on, that we can continue to say, hey, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, how do we bring hope into the world? So um, Beatitudes, pretty simple. <laughs> yeah. simple but it's not easy right? oh, it's a yeah. paradox yeah so mm -hmm. closing radical. closing closing thoughts from you guys on this or even the series well, i would just for i would encourage uh you guys to continue your study of the sermon on the mount yeah mm -hmm. i mean it's the meat and potatoes of knowing who christ is mm -hmm. and so for me i like my encouragement my exhortation is go back and really spend time studying through the beatitudes but don't stop there keep going mm -hmm. keep going the, the sermon on the mount is so rich it's great and you will learn so much the sermon on the mount is about the human heart mm. it isn't about law and it's not about process and if we do formulas it works jesus takes all of that stuff and flips it upside down and drills right down to the motive of the heart mm -hmm. and so i man it's good dive in it's, it's good. good yeah yeah, that is really good. Yep. Anything from you guys? I was just thinking, yeah, dive into the Sermon on the Mount. It's the most famous sermon in all the world, right? Most quoted from, most referred to. Mm -hmm. And let that, I think the number one thing for me, if I if I could encourage someone to do anything, is to dive into the Sermon on the Mount and let that remind you that this world's not our home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? The, the, the Beatitudes and everything else Jesus says is so that we would remember that we're citizens of another kingdom. Right. And so the Beatitudes for me are really a great uh, instruction manual of how to live in the world, but not be of the world. Yeah. Right. And in doing that, uh, we reside squarely in the hope in Jesus Christ in that kingdom to come. It's good. Yeah. It's good. I'm just, I, I agree with everything you guys said. I, I am still high centered on let's enjoy the freedom that we have. Yep. Uh, persecution for sure. Be prepared for it. Don't be surprised by it. Pray for those who are undergoing persecution. But let's also not lose fight. At least in this country at this point, yep. we have tremendous freedom. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we get to get pushed back. But I mean, if if all I get is people tell, saying bad stuff about me behind my back. Yeah. Okay. You know. We'll say it in front of you too. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Well, awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, that's a wrap for us uh, on the Overtime Podcast and our Paradox series. If you missed any of those weeks, you can find all those resources online. Each campus, each week has a message and a sermon, and you get little glimpses here, but you can always check that out in the archive that we have. And be sure that you come back in the next couple episodes of the Overtime Podcast for our next series, but you're going to have to wait and see what that is. Oh. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time.